In the southeast corner of Vancouver, in a small section of Killarney Park, sits a meadow, an overgrown piece of land covered with lots of grass. But it's not just any meadow. It's what UBC researcher Jens Ulrich calls a park for bugs. Right now we're walking through uh, the pollinator meadow area of the park. Um, so this is that area where the mowing has been reduced and they've added a lot of different wildflower seeds as well. It's a far cry away from the carefully manicured turf grass lawns that some are used to. That's because this pollinator meadow was one of 18 urban parks across the city that Jens has surveyed. Parks with meadows saw an immediate increase in the number of pollinator species, an increase that persisted throughout the study's three-year run. For the pollinators themselves, we did see this really rapid response where pretty much all of the pollinator species that were going to move in moved in in that first year after these meadow areas were, were put in place. Um, and then again, they continued to stay there through time. Um, so these, these meadow areas attracted a lot of species really quickly and they supported them um, from year to year, where we didn't see them leaving the parks after they moved in. Ian says these results are promising and demonstrates that urban landscapes can act as havens for species like bees, birds, and butterflies. What we did find is that, you know, pretty much immediately after we add these meadows, we see a lot more species move in, and then they, they tend to stay there over time. So they're not, uh, they're not leaving these parks after they're attracted to them, um, and that's over the years. So uh, that kind of tells us that these parks uh, and, and this management here is um, supporting these pollinators in the long run. But that's not the only benefit. Yen says these havens can also have a lasting impact on food production and health. Some people have done some research into this and estimate that about one in three bites of food that we eat is dependent on those pollinators. So our diets would look very different and a lot less colorful and a lot less nutritious if we didn't have those pollinators uh, there to, to uh, pollinate those food crops. His research comes at a time where healthier and more resilient ecosystems are critical for biodiversity and can help counteract dwindling species numbers. A lot of pollinators are facing widespread declines where we know that their numbers are, are uh, shrinking or they're not being found or seen in places where they were previously found and seen. Um, so given their importance and given that, uh, that they are maybe facing these declines, it's really important that we find different ways and strategies for protecting them. The study also provides actionable recommendations, not just for future research, but for city planners and community organizations wanting to improve urban green spaces. We are already seeing this management expand to more area of the city. It's expanded to more parks. Um, so um, my hope then beyond that is that this can be adopted more widespread in different cities. Um, and I also hope it spurs more cities to um, maybe re rethink some restrictions on how we manage plants. Yen says that residents can also take part. Whether you have a backyard, a balcony, or a community garden plot, you can support pollinators by mowing less, planting native species, and avoiding pesticides. It's the small, simple changes that can make a big difference, not just for pollinators, but for people as well. I hope this builds positive relationships and interactions that people can have with wildlife um, in the city and, and thinking of biodiversity as a, a complementary uh, component of people's lives. For On the Coast, I'm Danielle Piper.